Hi, I want to talk to you a little bit about why I believe that large corporates are wasting tens and hundreds of millions of pounds on data technologies that aren't going to change their business and what they can do about it. And I think before I can do that, I probably need to explain a little bit about why does Medano even exist? Medano exists because the founders came from a consulting background, an industry that they believed was fundamentally broken, an industry incentivized by mediocrity. Don't do a great job, you'll make less money. Don't do a terrible job, you'll get sued. Land somewhere in the middle. And if industry incentivized medi by mediocrity, that's exactly what we got. And we felt there must be a better way of running change. You know, what if we could build a business that was fundamentally focused on delivering value from projects and delivering them with exceptional execution, you know, doing the right thing and delivering it right. And we believe fundamentally both of those were a data problem. How do you use data to focus on value and to optimize value? How do you use data to manage change to make sure you're delivering more? And if you think about all that consultancy really is, it's I can do this type of thing for you because I've done this type of thing before. It's trend analysis, but we sell humans to do it. It doesn't even make any logical sense. And because Medano was basically set up to say, what if there was a better way? What if there was a way to do more, to deliver more value, to help our customers deliver more value for their customers? We learned a lot about data culture, something that we didn't start out looking for. And so what is Medano? What do we do? We run data projects. We run uh, data strategy, data analytics, data innovation, applied machine learning, reg change, big data transformations. But I don't really want to talk about that because any data company can put up that slide and I would hope most of them do. Any consultancy can probably put up that slide. And I think the thing that's different, the thing that I want to talk about is why I believe it doesn't matter what you do in any of those projects if you don't also focus on how do you build a culture to drive value from the change that you put in? How do you drive value by changing the way your organization interacts with data, the relationship your company has with data, the data culture of the organization? And if we step back and say, well, if we're going to change culture, what, what is culture? So, Culture only exists through observable behavior, behaviors of its members. Culture is just a symptom of the way that people in your organization consistently behave. You know, so to understand and change culture, we need to understand and change behavior, one small step at a time. So if we can change consistently the behaviors that people in our organization exhibit, specifically around how they use data to drive decision making, we can start to build a culture that drives value from new technologies that we put in. So if we then think, well, what would it take to trigger behavior? So behavior is just a function of motivation, ability, and triggers and rewards. So if we want to drive a change in behavior, we've not got to make sure that as important as designing the technology that we're putting in, we're designing the new behaviors that we want people to exhibit when they use that technology, when they use that data. What is the actual behavior that we're trying to change our organization to that is going to deliver more value for our organization and more importantly to deliver more value for our, our customers. So if we then start to break that down and say, well, how can we design that experience? And I'm going to talk through each of these in turn, but I think it's worth saying that you know, behavior is a very personal thing and what drives our, each of our individual behaviors is a personal thing. So what might be someone's motivation, might be someone else's learning experience, might be someone else's reward. So I'll talk through them in basic concept, and we can, we can then kind of break that down into what that would look like. But I don't think it's, it's not a perfect science, but what I hope to show you is that it is something that needs to be explicitly designed throughout the process of change. So if we start with motivation, and within the context that we mostly work with large-scale organizations. In large organizations, a huge part of motivation is just changing the perception of what is possible. So if you go and ask your finance colleagues or your risk colleagues, you know, what do you want to do differently with data? They'll probably tell you, that report I get on a Thursday, I'd like it on a Tuesday with a couple of extra columns. But what if you change the context of how you ask that question? So build a physical space that feels different. You know, with cutting edge technology all around the room with branded so it feels modern so when they step into that room it feels like they're stepping into the future, they're seeing things they've never seen before in terms of technology and then don't ask what do you want to do with data ask 
what do you want to do with your business? That if you could do, it would fundamentally change your business, but you currently can't do because you're limited by technology or data or skills. And you'll get a fundamentally different question. And then when you start to answer those questions, you'll start to build real use cases that are exciting to people that become the motivation for others. So whether you've built propensity models that helps you pinpoint exactly the customers and the customers' needs, or you've built automation to drive value and drive efficiency into your process, or you've used machine learning or different technologies to trigger new business models, you start to build an excitement around the organization. I want that. I want that for my part of the business. I want to be a part of that new exciting journey. And then if you start to build that momentum, you've got to place what, what is data within, within your organization? How do you start to make data aspirational? And if you can start to put in place data is at the heart of everything we do. There is a career path. It is motivating, exciting to me to be a part of that. You know, so we run big events with senior people in the business talking about data. We make it clear that data is the exciting career path. We build a hype and a community and excitement around data being something that you would want to attach your, yourself to. But we still have to be able to, to do it. And I think one of the things that we often think about, you know, especially as technologists, you know, when we talk about ability, we think of, well, we need to do some technical training. If we can make sure everyone knows how to do their job, then they'll do their job. But it's so much more than that. If you start with the executives who have to make investment decisions into these new technologies, tens and hundreds of millions of pounds in investments in some cases, they usually got to the position that they're in during a period where the technologies that we use today weren't relevant. You know, how to apply machine learning or how to use visualization just wasn't something that they grew their experience through. So we've run lots of exec education, both to just explain the kind of basic concepts to help execs do machine learning, to use visualizations, to understand the implications of that. So that what would be a, I don't understand how that could be possible, or I'm scared of that, or how does that change everything we've done, becomes a, I am a part of this journey. I am educated to make an investment decision that says we should be doing that, and takes it from a, I am scared of technology changing the way our business is, to I'm excited about using technology to change our business. But then if you step back and look at, well, what about our data practitioners? What about the people who are a part of this change, who are driving this change? And if you think about, if you're changing everything at, at once, that could be a very daunting situation for someone to say, I need to change everything about the way that we're doing work, about what we're doing in the technologies that I'm doing. But if you can put in place structured processes around, you know, here is the standard processes of how we run our analytics lab. This is how we run our innovation center. And give them, here are the defined roles. And your role is only a small movement from where you are today to this new, exciting world. What that means is by taking away as many variables as you possibly can, you can leave them not with a daunting situation, but a really exciting technological development curve. Like, so you can take it from a, I am scared to be involved in this change, to I am excited to be involved in this change, and I can be a driver of this change. And then if you think about the rest of the organization, you can't build a data culture, you can't build a data-led company if only the data people and the execs care about data. But they don't need to know the same about data as everybody else. You know, how do you start to educate people around the business around why data is important, how it transforms their role, how it transforms their job, how they can deliver more value to their customers? And there's a behavioral change scientist who works at McDonald's who always tells me, you've got to fish where the fish are. You've got to put the education where people are already learning. You know, we don't learn how we used to in the world. We don't get out the encyclopedia or read a big document when we don't know something. We go on YouTube, we watch a little video, we look on an app. So that's where you have to put your education. You've got to figure out what is it I'm trying to get across? What is really important for these set of people about data, about data quality, about data governance, about analytics? and build that into consumable content. Give them a content journey that they are used to that is modern and exciting for them. But once we've started, we have to keep that momentum. And I think a key concept about momentum is by very proxy of building momentum, it has to be self-fulfilling. You have to close the loop. And data flows can quite often be one directional. Someone gathers some data, someone analyzes some data, and someone makes a decision. 
And actually, that doesn't drive momentum by the very nature of that line. How do you build a loop that is about a continuous feedback that says these decisions have been made, we need more data to make the next decision to drive more progress, and starting to think about how you drive that. And I think you can do that in kind of three core ways. Right? One is, how do you attach people to the purpose? How do you say, actually, what I am doing drives the business strategy? You know, things like building the data, data rooms where people can engage, where they have data all around them, which drives the hub of the business. Here is everything that exists within our business that drives it, and people can see that is my contribution to the business strategy. How do you, what about how you give, make sure it has value? So the data that I'm using is having a tangible impact on our clients, and I can see that. How do you start to dashboard that and put data around people? How do you share with people the metrics about the work that they are doing with them, put the data around them that says, here is your contribution, here is as you make that change, it is having value for the business, it is having value for our customers. Or, and how do you reward? So reward isn't just the standard monetary reward cycles that you would expect in, in corporate. So that is a part of it, data should be linked to that as well. But it's also, what is the lexicon you use? What do you celebrate? What do you talk about? What do you get excited about? You know, what do people ask for? And when that starts to be talking about data stories, you know that you have a continuous momentum that will drive uh, further advancement, further innovation, further excitement in taking data and driving it forward as part of the, the organization. So the thing I would leave you with is the most important thing about building a data culture. And building a data culture and building a data organization will no longer be optional. So I would propose that the next 10 years for data and machine learning will drive more societal and organizational change than the internet did between 95 and 2005. In 95, not everybody knew that they were internet business. But those who did know, boy, did they find out to their benefit. Those in 2005, very few businesses didn't realize that they at least had a significant part of being an internet business. You know, in 2019, not everybody knows they were data business. In 10 years' time, everybody will know that they are a data business. So there is nothing more important about embracing a data culture. And those who realize that the most important thing about driving data and becoming a data-led organization is not the technology you adopt. It is understanding and proactively designing a culture that is going to get value from that technology. Those are the ones that will succeed in that place. And I think the thing that I would, I would finish with is... The most important thing about driving a data culture, the most important thing about getting value from that investment that companies are making in data technologies is to design not a technology solution, but to design a people movement that drives value.